Bolivia. Coordinates, 16 degrees 42 43 S 64 degrees 39 58 W, 16.712 degrees south 64.666 degrees west, minus 16.712, minus 64.666. Bolivia, slash B Livy slash, listen, Spanish, listen, Guarani, Bolivia, Aymara, Vulawaya, Quechua, Pulawaya, officially the plurinational state of Bolivia, Spanish, Estado Plurinacional de Bolivia Spanish pronunciation, listen, is a landlocked country located in western central South America. The capital is Sucre, while the seat of government and financial center is located in La Paz. The largest city and principal industrial center is Santa Cruz de la Sierra, located on the Llanos Orientales, tropical lowlands, a mostly flat region in the east of the country. The sovereign state of Bolivia is a constitutionally unitary state, divided into nine departments. Its geography varies from the peaks of the Andes in the west, to the eastern lowlands, situated within the Amazon basin. It is bordered to the north and east by Brazil, to the southeast by Paraguay, to the south by Argentina, to the southwest by Chile, and to the northwest by Peru. One third of the country is within the Andean mountain range. With 1,098,581 square kilometers, 424,164 square miles, of area, Bolivia is the fifth largest country in South America, after Brazil, Argentina, Peru and Colombia, and alongside Paraguay, one of the only two landlocked countries in the Americas, the 27th largest in the world, the largest landlocked country in the Southern Hemisphere and the world's sixth largest landlocked country, after Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Chad, Niger, and Mali. The country's population, estimated at 11 million, is multi-ethnic, including Amerindians, Mestizos, Europeans, Asians, and Africans. The racial and social segregation that arose from Spanish colonialism has continued to the modern era. Spanish is the official and predominant language, although 36 indigenous languages also have official status, of which the most commonly spoken are Guarani, Aymara and Quechua languages. Before Spanish colonization, the Andean region of Bolivia was part of the Inca Empire, while the northern and eastern lowlands were inhabited by independent tribes. Spanish conquistadors arriving from Cusco and Asuncion took control of the region in the 16th century. During the Spanish colonial period Bolivia was administered by the Royal Audiencia of Charcas. Spain built its empire in large part upon the silver that was extracted from Bolivia's mines. After the first call for independence in 1809, 16 years of war followed before the establishment of the Republic, named for Simon Bolivar. Over the course of the 19th and early 20th century Bolivia lost control of several peripheral territories to neighboring countries including the seizure of its coastline by Chile in 1879. Bolivia remained relatively politically stable until 1971, when Hugo Banzer led a coup d'etat which replaced the socialist government of Juan José Torres with a military dictatorship headed by Banzer. Torres was murdered in Buenos Aires, Argentina by a right-wing death squad in 1976. Banzer's regime cracked down on leftist and socialist opposition and other forms of dissent, resulting in the torture and deaths of a number of Bolivian citizens. Dat Banzer was ousted in 1978 and later returned as the democratically elected president of Bolivia from 1997 to 2001. Modern Bolivia is a charter member of the UN, IMF, NAM, OISH, OCTO, Bank of the South, Alba and Dusan. For over a decade Bolivia has had one of the highest economic growth rates in Latin America, however, it remains the second poorest country in South America. It is a developing country, with a medium ranking in the Human Development Index, a poverty level of 38.6%, and one of the lowest crime rates in Latin America. Its main economic activities include agriculture, forestry, fishing, mining, and manufacturing goods such as textiles, clothing, refined metals, and refined petroleum. Bolivia is very rich in minerals, including tin, silver, and lithium. Etymology Bolivia is named after Simon Bolivar, a Venezuelan leader in the Spanish-American Wars of Independence. The leader of Venezuela, Antonio José de Sucre, had been given the option by Bolivar to either unite Charcas, present-day Bolivia, with the newly formed Republic of Peru, to unite with the United Provinces of Rio de la Plata, or to formally declare its independence from Spain as a wholly independent state. Dat Sucre opted to create a brand new state and on August 6, 1825, with local support, 
named it in honor of Simon Bolivar. The original name was Republic of Bolivar. Some days later, Congressman Manuel Martin Cruz proposed, if from Romulus comes Rome, then from Bolivar comes Bolivia, Spanish, C. de Romulo, Roma, de Bolivar, Bolivia. The name was approved by the Republic on October 3, 1825. In 2009, a new constitution changed the country's official name to Plurinational State of Bolivia in recognition of the multi-ethnic nature of the country and the enhanced position of Bolivia's indigenous peoples under the new constitution. History Pre-colonial The region now known as Bolivia had been occupied for over 2,500 years when the Aymara arrived. However, present-day Aymara associate themselves with the ancient civilization of the Tiwanaku culture which had its capital at Tiwanaku, in western Bolivia. The capital city of Tiwanaku dates from as early as 1500 BC when it was a small, agriculturally based village. The community grew to urban proportions between AD 600 and AD 800, becoming an important regional power in the southern Andes. According to early estimates, the city covered approximately 6.5 square kilometers, 2.5 square miles, at its maximum extent and had between 15,000 and 30,000 inhabitants. In 1996 satellite imaging was used to map the extent of fossilized Sucaculus, flooded raised fields, across the three primary valleys of Tiwanaku, arriving at population carrying capacity estimates of anywhere between 285,000 and 1,482,000 people. Around AD 400, Tiwanaku went from being a locally dominant force to a predatory state. Tiwanaku expanded its reaches into the Yungas and brought its culture and way of life to many other cultures in Peru, Bolivia, and Chile. Tiwanaku was not a violent culture in many respects. In order to expand its reach, Tiwanaku exercised great political astuteness, creating colonies, fostering trade agreements, which made the other cultures rather dependent, and instituting state cults. The empire continued to grow with no end in sight. William H. Isbell states Tiwanaku underwent a dramatic transformation between AD 600 and 700 that established new monumental standards for civic architecture and greatly increased the resident population. Tiwanaku continued to absorb cultures rather than eradicate them. Archaeologists note a dramatic adoption of Tiwanaku ceramics into the cultures which became part of the Tiwanaku Empire. Tiwanaku's power was further solidified through the trade it implemented among the cities within its empire. Tiwanaku's elites gained their status through the surplus food they controlled, collected from outlying regions and then redistributed to the general populace. Further, this elite's control of llama herds became a powerful control mechanism as llamas were essential for carrying goods between the civic center and the periphery. These herds also came to symbolize class distinctions between the commoners and the elites. Through this control and manipulation of surplus resources, the elite's power continued to grow until about AD 950. Down at this time a dramatic shift in climate occurred, causing a significant drop in precipitation in the Titicaca Basin, believed by archaeologists to have been on the scale of a major drought. As the rainfall decreased, many of the cities farther away from Lake Titicaca began to tender fewer foodstuffs to the elites. As the surplus of food decreased, and thus the amount available to underpin their power, the control of the elites began to falter. The capital city became the last place viable for food production due to the resiliency of the raised field method of agriculture. Tiwanaku disappeared around AD 1000 because food production, the main source of the elite's power, dried up. The area remained uninhabited for centuries thereafter. Between 1438 and 1527, the Inca Empire, during its expansion from its capital at Cusco, Peru, it gained control over much of what is now Andean Bolivia and extended its control into the fringes of the Amazon Basin. Colonial Period The Spanish conquest of the Inca Empire began in 1524, and was mostly completed by 1533. The territory now called Bolivia was known as Charcas, and was under the authority of the Viceroy of Lima. Local government came from the Audiencia de Charcas located in Chuquisaca, La Plata, modern Sucre. Founded in 1545 as a mining town, Potosi soon produced fabulous wealth, becoming the largest city in the New World with a population exceeding 150,000 people. By the late 16th century, Bolivian silver was an important source of revenue for the Spanish Empire. A steady stream of natives served as labor force under the brutal, slave conditions of the Spanish version of the pre-Columbian draft system called the Mita. 
Charcas was transferred to the Viceroyalty of the Rio de la Plata in 1776 and the people from Buenos Aires, the capital of the Viceroyalty, coined the term Upper Peru, Spanish, Alto Peru, as a popular reference to the royal audiencia of Charcas. Tupac Cotteri led the indigenous rebellion that laid siege to La Paz in March 1781, during which 20,000 people died. As Spanish royal authority weakened during the Napoleonic Wars, sentiment against colonial rule grew. Independence and subsequent wars The struggle for independence started in the city of Sucre on May 25, 1809 and the Chuquisaca Revolution, Chuquisaca was then the name of the city, is known as the first cry of freedom in Latin America. That revolution was followed by the La Paz Revolution on July 16, 1809. The La Paz Revolution marked a complete split with the Spanish government, while the Chuquisaca Revolution established a local independent junta in the name of the Spanish king deposed by Napoleon Bonaparte. Both revolutions were short-lived and defeated by the Spanish authorities and the Viceroyalty of the Rio de la Plata, but the following year the Spanish-American Wars of Independence raged across the continent. Bolivia was captured and recaptured many times during the war by the royalists and patriots. Buenos Aires sent three military campaigns, all of which were defeated, and eventually limited itself to protecting the national borders at Salta. Bolivia was finally freed of royalist dominion by Marshal Antonio José de Sucre, with a military campaign coming from the north in support of the campaign of Simon Bolívar. After 16 years of war the republic was proclaimed on August 6, 1825. In 1836, Bolivia, under the rule of Marshal Andrés de Santa Cruz, invaded Peru to reinstall the deposed president, General Luis José de Abregaso. Peru and Bolivia formed the Peru-Bolivian Confederation, with de Santa Cruz as the supreme protector. Following tension between the Confederation and Chile, Chile declared war on December 28, 1836. Argentina separately declared war on the Confederation on May 9, 1837. The Peruvian-Bolivian forces achieved several major victories during the War of the Confederation, the defeat of the Argentine expedition and the defeat of the first Chilean expedition on the fields of Paw Carpeta near the city of Arequipa. At the outset of the war, the Chilean and Peruvian rebel army surrendered unconditionally and signed the Paw Carpeta Treaty. The treaty stipulated that Chile would withdraw from Peru-Bolivia, Chile would return captured Confederate ships, economic relations would be normalized, and the Confederation would pay Peruvian debt to Chile. In Chile, the government and public rejected the peace treaty. Chile organized a second attack on the Confederation and defeated it in the Battle of Yungay. After this defeat, Santa Cruz resigned and went to exile in Ecuador and then Paris, and the Peruvian-Bolivian Confederation was dissolved. Following the renewed independence of Peru, Peruvian President General Agustin Gamara invaded Bolivia on November 18, 1841. The Battle de Ngavi took place, in which the Bolivian army defeated the Peruvian troops of Gamara, killed in the battle. After the victory, Bolivia invaded Peru. Several fronts of struggle were opened in the Peruvian south. The eviction of the Bolivian troops in the south of Peru would be achieved by the greater availability of material and human resources of Peru. The Bolivian army did not have enough troops to maintain the occupation. In the district of Locumba, Tacna, a column between Peruvian soldiers and peasants defeated a Bolivian regiment in the so-called Battle of Los Altos de Chip, Locumba. In the district of Sama and in Arica, the Peruvian Colonel José María Lavallan organizes a troop that manages to defeat the Bolivian forces of Colonel Rodríguez Magarinos which dislodges the port of Arica. The Battle of Tarapacá of 1842, Peruvian militias formed by the commander Juan Buendía, defeated on January 7, 1842, the detachment led by Colonel Bolivian José María García, who died in the confrontation. Thus, the Bolivian troops leave Tacna, Arica and Tarapacá in February of 1842, retreating towards Moquegua and Puno. The combats of Motoni and Orio expelled and subsequently initiated the withdrawal of Bolivian forces occupying Peruvian territory, threatening again Bolivia to suffer an invasion. At the end of the war, the Treaty of Puno was signed on June 7, 1842. However, the climate of tension between Lima and La Paz would continue until 1847, when the signing of a peace and trade treaty became effective. The estimated population of the main three cities in 1843 was La Paz 300,000, Cochabamba 250,000 and Potosi 200,000. A period of political and economic instability in the early to mid-19th century weakened Bolivia. In addition, 
During the War of the Pacific, 1879-83, Chile occupied vast territories rich in natural resources southwest of Bolivia, including the Bolivian coast. Chile took control of today's Chuquicamata area, the adjoining rich Saliter, Saltpeter, Fields, and the port of Antofagasta among other Bolivian territories. Thus, since independence, Bolivia has lost over half of its territory to neighboring countries. Through diplomatic channels in 1909, it lost the basin of the Madre de Dios River and the territory of the Purus in the Amazon, yielding 250,000 square kilometers to Peru. It also lost the state of Acre, in the Acre War, important because this region was known for its production of rubber. Peasants and the Bolivian army fought briefly but after a few victories, and facing the prospect of a total war against Brazil, it was forced to sign the Treaty of Petrópolis in 1903, in which Bolivia lost this rich territory. That popular myth has it that Bolivian President Mariano Melgarejo, 1864-71 traded the land for what he called a magnificent white horse and acre was subsequently flooded by Brazilians, which ultimately led to confrontation and fear of war with Brazil. In the late 19th century, an increase in the world price of silver brought Bolivia relative prosperity and political stability. Early 20th Century During the early 20th century, tin replaced silver as the country's most important source of wealth. A succession of governments controlled by the economic and social elite followed laissez-faire capitalist policies through the first 30 years of the 20th century. Living conditions of the native people, who constitute most of the population, remain deplorable with work opportunities limited to primitive conditions in the mines and in large estates having nearly feudal status, they had no access to education, economic opportunity, and political participation. Bolivia's defeat by Paraguay in the Chaco War, 1932-35, where Bolivia lost a great part of the Gran Chaco region in dispute, marked a turning point. The Revolutionary Nationalist Movement MNR, the most historic political party, emerged as a broad-based party. Denied its victory in the 1951 presidential elections, the MNR led a successful revolution in 1952. Under President Victor Paz Soro, the MNR, having strong popular pressure, introduced universal suffrage into his political platform and carried out a sweeping land reform promoting rural education and nationalization of the country's largest tin mines. Late 20th century Twelve years of tumultuous rule left the MNR divided. In 1964, a military junta overthrew President Essensoro at the outset of his third term. The 1969 death of President René Barrientos Ortuño, a former member of the junta who was elected president in 1966, led to a succession of weak governments. Alarmed by the rising popular assembly and the increase in the popularity of President Juan José Torres, the military, the MNR, and others installed Colonel, later General. Hugo Banzer Suarez as president in 1971. He returned to the presidency in 1997 through 2001. The United States Central Intelligence Agency (CIA) had been active in providing finances and training to the Bolivian military dictatorship in the 1960s. The revolutionary leader Che Guevara was killed by a team of CIA officers and members of the Bolivian army on October 9, 1967, in Bolivia. Felix Rodriguez was a CIA officer on the team with the Bolivian army that captured and shot Guevara. Rodriguez said that after he received a Bolivian presidential execution order, he told the soldier who pulled the trigger to aim carefully, to remain consistent with the Bolivian government's story that Che had been killed in action during a clash with the Bolivian army. Rodriguez said the U.S. government had wanted Che in Panama, and I could have tried to falsify the command to the troops, and got Che to Panama as the U.S. government said they had wanted but that he had chosen to let history run its course as desired by Bolivia. Elections in 1979 and 1981 were inconclusive and marked by fraud. There were coups d'etat, counter-coups, and caretaker governments. In 1980, General Luis García Mesa Tejada carried out a ruthless and violent coup d'etat that did not have popular support. He pacified the people by promising to remain in power only for one year. At the end of the year, he staged a televised rally to claim popular support and announced, Bueno, mi quedo, or, all right, I'll stay. After a military rebellion forced out Mesa in 1981, three other military governments in 14 months struggled with Bolivia's growing problems. Unrest forced the military to convoke the Congress, elected in 1980, and allow it to choose a new chief executive. In October 1982, Hernán Siles Zuazo again became president, 
22 years after the end of his first term of office, 1956-60. Democratic Transition Gonzalo Sánchez de Lozada pursued an aggressive economic and social reform agenda. The most dramatic reform was privatization under the capitalization program, under which investors, typically foreign, acquired 50% ownership and management control of public enterprises in return for agreed-upon capital investments. In 1993, Gonzalo Sánchez de Lozada ran for president in alliance with the Tupac Cotteri Revolutionary Liberation Movement, which inspired indigenous-sensitive and multicultural wear policies. In 1993, Sánchez de Lozada introduced the Plan de Todos, which led to the decentralization of government, introduction of intercultural bilingual education, implementation of agrarian legislation, and privatization of state-owned businesses. The plan explicitly stated that Bolivian citizens would own a minimum of 51% of enterprises, under the plan, most state-owned enterprises, SOEs, though not mines, were sold. This privatization of SOEs led to a neoliberal structuring. The law of popular participation dumped upon municipalities the responsibility of maintaining various infrastructures, and offering services, health, education, systems of irrigation, without support from the state. The reforms and economic restructuring were strongly opposed by certain segments of society, which instigated frequent and sometimes violent protests, particularly in La Paz and the Chapare coca growing region, from 1994 through 1996. The indigenous population of the Andean region was not able to benefit from government reforms. During this time, the Umbrella Labor Organization of Bolivia, the Central Obrera Boliviana COB, became increasingly unable to effectively challenge government policy. A teacher's strike in 1995 was defeated because the COB could not marshal the support of many of its members, including construction and factory workers. 1997-2002 General Banzer Presidency In the 1997 elections, General Hugo Banzer, leader of the Nationalist Democratic Action Party ADN, and former dictator 1971-78, won 22 percent of the vote while the MNR candidate won 18 percent. At the outset of his government, President Banzer launched a policy of using special police units to eradicate physically the illegal coca of the Chapare region. The mayor of Jamie Paz Zamora remained a coalition partner throughout the Banzer government, supporting this policy, called the Dignity Plan. The Banzer government basically continued the free market and privatization policies of its predecessor. The relatively robust economic growth of the mid-1990s continued until about the third year of its term in office. After that, regional, global and domestic factors contributed to a decline in economic growth. Financial crises in Argentina and Brazil, lower world prices for export commodities, and reduced employment in the coca sector depressed the Bolivian economy. The public also perceived a significant amount of public sector corruption. These factors contributed to increasing social protests during the second half of Banzer's term. Between January 1999 and April 2000, large-scale protests erupted in Cochabamba, Bolivia's third-largest city, in response to the privatization of water resources by foreign companies and a subsequent doubling of water prices. On August 6, 2001, Banzer resigned from office after being diagnosed with cancer. He died less than a year later. Vice President Jorge Fernando Quiroga Ramirez completed the final year of his term. In the June 2002 national elections, former President Gonzalo Sánchez de Lozada MNR, placed first with 22.5% of the vote, followed by COCA advocate and native peasant leader Evo Morales, movement towards socialism, MAS, with 20.9%. A July agreement between the MNR and the fourth place MIR, which had again been led in the election by former President Jamie Paz Zamora, virtually ensured the election of Sanchez de Lozada in the congressional runoff, and on 6 August he was sworn in for the second time. The MNR platform featured three overarching objectives economic reactivation, and job creation, anti corruption, and social inclusion. In 2003, the Bolivian gas conflict broke out. On October 12, 2003 the government imposed martial law in El Alto after 16 people were shot by the police and several dozen wounded in violent clashes. Faced with the option of resigning or more bloodshed, Sanchez de Lozada offered his resignation in a letter to an emergency session of Congress. After his resignation was accepted and his vice president, Carlos Mesa, invested, he left on a commercially scheduled flight for the United States. 
The country's internal situation became unfavorable for such political action on the international stage. After a resurgence of gas protests in 2005, Carlos Mesa attempted to resign in January 2005, but his offer was refused by Congress. On March 22, 2005, after weeks of new street protests from organizations accusing Mesa of bowing to U.S. corporate interests, Mesa again offered his resignation to Congress, which was accepted on 10 June. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Eduardo Rodriguez, was sworn as interim president to succeed the outgoing Carlos Mesa. 2005 Morales Presidency and Renationalization of Petroleum Assets Evo Morales won the 2005 presidential election with 53.7% of the votes, an absolute majority, unusual in Bolivian elections. On May 1, 2006, Morales caused controversy when he announced his intent to renationalize Bolivian hydrocarbon assets. Fulfilling a campaign promise, on August 6, 2006, Morales opened the Bolivian Constituent Assembly to begin writing a new constitution aimed at giving more power to the indigenous majority. In August 2007, more conflicts arose in Sucre, as the city demanded the discussion of the seat of government inside the assembly, hoping the executive and legislative branches could return to the city, but the assembly and the government said this demand was overwhelmingly impractical and politically undesirable. In May 2008, Evo Morales was a signatory to the UNASUR Constitutive Treaty of the Union of South American Nations. In the 2009 national general elections, Evo Morales was re-elected with 64.22% of the vote. His party, Movement for Socialism, also won a two-thirds majority in both houses of the National Congress. Geography Bolivia is located in the central zone of South America, between 57 degrees and 26 minutes 69 degrees and 38 minutes west and 9 degrees and 38 minutes 22 degrees and 53 minutes south. With an area of 1,098,581 square kilometers, 424,164 square miles, Bolivia is the world's 28th largest country, and the 5th largest country in South America, extending from the Central Andes through part of the Gran Chaco, Pantanal and as far as the Amazon. The geographic center of the country is the so-called Puerto Estrella, Starport, on the Rio Grande, in New Flota Chavez Province, Santa Cruz Department. The geography of the country exhibits a great variety of terrain and climates. Bolivia has a high level of biodiversity, considered one of the greatest in the world, as well as several eco-regions with ecological subunits such as the Altiplano, tropical rainforests, including Amazon rainforest, dry valleys, and the Chiquitania, which is a tropical savanna. These areas feature enormous variations in altitude, from an elevation of 6,542 meters, 21,463 feet, above sea level in Nevado Sajama to nearly 70 meters, 230 feet, along the Paraguay River. Although a country of great geographic diversity, Bolivia has remained a landlocked country since the War of the Pacific. Puerto Suarez, San Matias and Puerto Cuajaro are located in the Bolivian Pantanal. Bolivia can be divided into three physiographic regions. Bolivia has three drainage basins. Geology The geology of Bolivia comprises a variety of different lithologies as well as tectonic and sedimentary environments. On a synoptic scale, geological units coincide with topographical units. Most elementally, the country is divided into a mountainous western area affected by the subduction processes in the Pacific and an eastern lowlands of stable platforms and shields. Climate the climate of Bolivia varies drastically from one eco-region to the other, from the tropics in the eastern Llanos to a polar climate in the western Andes. The summers are warm, humid in the east and dry in the west, with rains that often modify temperatures, humidity, winds, atmospheric pressure and evaporation, yielding very different climates in different areas. When the climatological phenomenon known as El Niño takes place, it causes great alterations in the weather. Winters are very cold in the west and it snows in the mountain ranges, while in the western regions, windy days are more common. The autumn is dry in the non-tropical regions. Issues with climate change Bolivia is especially vulnerable to the negative consequences of climate change. 20% of the world's tropical glaciers are located within the country, and are more sensitive to change in temperature due to the tropical climate they are located in. Dot temperatures in the Andes increase by 0.1 degrees Celsius per decade from 1939 to 1998, and have begun to triple, 
0.33 degrees Celsius, annually from 1980 to 2005, causing glaciers to recede at an accelerated pace and create unforeseen water shortages in Andean agricultural towns. Farmers have taken to temporary city jobs when there is poor yield for their crops, while others have started permanently leaving the agricultural sector and are migrating to nearby towns for other forms of work. Some view these migrants as the first generation of climate refugees. Cities that neighboring agricultural land, like El Alto, face the challenge of providing services to the influx of new migrants, because there is no alternative water source, the city's water source is now being constricted. Bolivia's government and other agencies have acknowledged the need to instill new policies battling the effects of climate change. The World Bank has provided funding through the Climate Investment Funds CIF, and are using the Pilot Program for Climate Resilience PPCR2, to construct new irrigation systems, protect riverbanks and basins, and work on building water resources with the help of indigenous communities. Bolivia has also implemented the Bolivian Strategy on Climate Change, which is based on taking action in these four areas. Biodiversity Bolivia with an enormous variety of organisms and ecosystems, is part of the like-minded megadiverse countries. Bolivia's variable altitudes, ranging from 90 to 6,542 meters, 295 to 21,463 feet, above sea level, allow for a vast biologic diversity. The territory of Bolivia comprises four types of biomes, 32 ecological regions, and 199 ecosystems. Within this geographic area there are several natural parks and reserves such as the Nolkempf Mercado National Park, the Madidi National Park, the Tunari National Park, the Eduardo Avaroa Andean Fauna National Reserve, and the Caia del Gran Chaco National Park and Integrated Management Natural Area, among others. Bolivia boasts over 17,000 species of seed plants, including over 1,200 species of fern, 1,500 species of marchane shifita and moss, and at least 800 species of fungus. In addition, there are more than 3,000 species of medicinal plants. Bolivia is considered the place of origin for such species as peppers and chili peppers, peanuts, the common beans, yucca, and several species of palm. Bolivia also naturally produces over 4,000 kinds of potatoes. Bolivia has more than 2,900 animal species, including 398 mammals, over 1,400 birds, about 14% of birds known in the world, being the sixth most diverse country in terms of bird species, 204 amphibians, 277 reptiles, and 635 fish, all freshwater fish as Bolivia is a landlocked country. In addition, there are more than 3,000 types of butterfly, and more than 60 domestic animals. Bolivia has gained global attention for its law of the rights of Mother Earth, which accords nature the same rights as humans. Politics and Government Bolivia has been governed by democratically elected governments since 1982, prior to that, it was governed by various dictatorships. Presidents Hernán Siles Suazo, 1982-85 and Víctor Paz Asensoro, 1985-89 began a tradition of ceding power peacefully which has continued, although two presidents have stepped down in the face of popular protests, Gonzalo Sánchez de Lozada in 2003 and Carlos Mesa in 2005. Bolivia's multi-party democracy has seen a wide variety of parties in the presidency and parliament, although the revolutionary nationalist movement, nationalist democratic action, and the revolutionary left movement predominated from 1985 to 2005. The current president is Evo Morales, the first indigenous Bolivian to serve as head of state. Morales' movement for socialism, political instrument for the sovereignty of the People's Party was the first to win an outright presidential majority in four decades, doing so both in 2005 and 2009. The Constitution, drafted in 2006-07 and approved in 2009, provides for balanced executive, legislative, judicial, and electoral powers, as well as several levels of autonomy. The traditionally strong executive branch tends to overshadow the Congress, whose role is generally limited to debating and approving legislation initiated by the executive. The judiciary, consisting of the Supreme Court and departmental and lower courts, has long been riddled with corruption and inefficiency. Dot through revisions to the Constitution in 1994, and subsequent laws, the government has initiated potentially far-reaching reforms in the judicial system as well as increasing decentralizing powers to departments, municipalities, and indigenous territories.
The executive branch is headed by a president and vice president, and consists of a variable number, currently, 20, of government ministries. The president is elected to a five-year term by popular vote, and governs from the presidential palace, popularly called the Burnt Palace, Palacio Clamado, in La Paz. In the case that no candidate receives an absolute majority of the popular vote or more than 40% of the vote with an advantage of more than 10% over the second-place finisher, a runoff is to be held among the two candidates most voted. The Assemblée Legislative Plurinacional, Plurinational Legislative Assembly or National Congress, has two chambers. The Camara de Diputados, Chamber of Deputies, has 130 members elected to five-year terms, 70 from single-member districts, circunscripciones, 60 by proportional representation, and 7 by the minority indigenous peoples of seven departments. The Camara de Senadores, Chamber of Senators, has 36 members, 4 per department. Members of the Assembly are elected to five-year terms. The body has its headquarters on the Plaza Murillo in La Paz, but also holds honorary sessions elsewhere in Bolivia. The Vice President serves as titular head of the Combined Assembly. The Judiciary consists of the Supreme Court, the Constitutional Tribunal, the Judiciary Council, Agrarian, and Environmental Tribunal, and District, Departmental, and Lower Courts. In October 2011, Bolivia held its first judicial elections to choose members of the national courts by popular vote, a reform brought about by Evo Morales. The plurinational electoral organ is an independent branch of government which replaced the National Electoral Court in 2010. The branch consists of the Supreme Electoral Tribunal, the nine departmental electoral tribunals, electoral judges, the anonymously selected juries at election tables, and electoral notaries. Wilfredo Avando presides over the seven-member Supreme Electoral Tribunal. Its operations are mandated by the Constitution and regulated by the Electoral Regime Law, Law 026, passed 2010. The organ's first elections were the country's first judicial election in October 2011, and five municipal special elections held in 2011. Capital Bolivia has its constitutionally recognized capital in Sucre, while La Paz is the seat of government. La Plata now Sucre, was proclaimed provisional capital of the newly independent Alto Peru, later, Bolivia, on July 1, 1826. On July 12, 1839, President José Miguel de Velasco proclaimed a law naming the city as the capital of Bolivia, and renaming it in honor of the revolutionary leader Antonio José de Sucre. The Bolivian seat of government moved to La Paz at the start of the 20th century, as a consequence of Sucre's relative remoteness from economic activity after the decline of Potosi and its silver industry and of the Liberal Party in the War of 1899. The 2009 Constitution assigns the role of national capital to Sucre, not referring to La Paz in the text. In addition to being the constitutional capital, the Supreme Court of Bolivia is located in Sucre, making it the judicial capital. Nonetheless, the Palacio Clamato, the presidential palace and seat of Bolivian executive power, is located in La Paz, as are the National Congress and Plurinational Electoral Organ. La Paz thus continues to be the seat of government. Law and Crime There are 54 prisons in Bolivia, which incarcerate around 8,700 people as of 2010. The prisons are managed by the Penitentiary Regime Directorate, Spanish, Dirección de Regimen Penitenciario. There are 17 prisons in departmental capital cities and 36 provincial prisons. Foreign Relations Despite losing its maritime coast, the so-called Litoral Department, after the War of the Pacific, Bolivia has historically maintained, as a state policy, a maritime claim to the part of Chile, the claim asks for sovereign access to the Pacific Ocean and its maritime space. The issue has also been presented before the Organization of American States, in 1979. The OISH passed the 426 resolution, which declared that the Bolivian problem is a hemispheric problem. On April 4, 1884, a truce was signed with Chile, whereby Chile gave facilities of access to Bolivian products through Antofagasta, and freed the payment of export rights in the port of Arica. In October 1904, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship was signed, and Chile agreed to build a railway between Arica and La Paz, to improve access of Bolivian products to the ports. The Special Economical Zone for Bolivia in Ilo, ZB, is a special economic area of 5 kilometers, 3.1 miles, of maritime coast, and a total extension of 358 hectares, 880 acres, called Mar Bolivia, Sea Bolivia, 
where Bolivia may maintain a free port near Ilo, Peru under its administration and operation for a period of 99 years starting in 1992. Once that time has passed, all the construction and territory revert to the Peruvian government. Since 1964, Bolivia has had its own port facilities in the Bolivian Free Port in Rosario, Argentina. This port is located on the Parana River, which is directly connected to the Atlantic Ocean. The dispute with Chile was taken to the International Court of Justice. The court ruled in support of the Chilean position, and declared that although Chile may have held talks about a Bolivian corridor to the sea, the country was not required to actually negotiate one or to surrender its territory. Military The Bolivian government annually spends $130 million on defense. The Bolivian military comprises three branches, Ejército, Army, Naval, Navy, and Fuerza Aérea, Air Force. The legal age for voluntary admissions is 18, however, when numbers are small the government in the past has recruited people as young as 14. The tour of duty is generally 12 months. The Bolivian army has around 31,500 men. There are six military regions, Regiones Militares RMs, in the army. The army is organized into 10 divisions. Although it is landlocked Bolivia keeps a navy. The Bolivian naval force, Fuerza Naval Boliviana in Spanish, is a naval force about 5,000 strong in 2008. The Bolivian Air Force, Fuerza Aérea Boliviana or FAB, has nine air bases, located at La Paz, Cochabamba, Santa Cruz, Porto Suarez, Darija, Viumontes, Cabija, Riberalta, and Rabor. In 2018, Bolivia signed the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Administrative Divisions Bolivia has nine departments, Pondo Louisiana Paz, Beni, Oro, Cochabamba, Santa Cruz, Potosi, Chiquisaca, Darija. According to what is established by the Bolivian political constitution, the law of autonomies and decentralization regulates the procedure for the elaboration of statutes of autonomy, the transfer and distribution of direct competences between the central government and the autonomous entities. There are four levels of decentralization, departmental government, constituted by the departmental assembly, with rights over the legislation of the department. The governor is chosen by universal suffrage. Municipal government, constituted by a municipal council, with rights over the legislation of the municipality. The mayor is chosen by universal suffrage. Regional government, formed by several provinces or municipalities of geographical continuity within a department. It is constituted by a regional assembly. Original indigenous government, self-governance of original indigenous people on the ancient territories where they live. Economy Bolivia's estimated 2012 gross domestic product, GDP, totaled $27.43 billion at official exchange rate and $56.14 billion at purchasing power parity. Despite a series of mostly political setbacks, between 2006 and 2009 the Morales administration has spurred growth higher than at any point in the preceding 30 years. The growth was accompanied by a moderate decrease in inequality. A surplus budget of 1.7% GDP was obtained by 2012, the government runs surpluses since Morales' administration reflecting a prudent economic management. A major blow to the Bolivian economy came with a drastic fall in the price of tin during the early 1980s, which impacted one of Bolivia's main sources of income in one of its major mining industries. Since 1985, the government of Bolivia has implemented a far-reaching program of macroeconomic stabilization and structural reform aimed at maintaining price stability, creating conditions for sustained growth, and alleviating scarcity. A major reform of the customs service has significantly improved transparency in this area. Parallel legislative reforms have locked into place market liberal policies, especially in the hydrocarbon and telecommunication sectors, that have encouraged private investment. Foreign investors are accorded national treatment. In April 2000, Hugo Banzer, the former president of Bolivia, signed a contract with Aguas del Tunari, a private consortium, to operate and improve the water supply in Bolivia's third largest city, Cochabamba. Shortly thereafter, the company tripled the water rates in that city, an action which resulted in protests and rioting among those who could no longer afford clean water. Amidst Bolivia's nationwide economic collapse and growing national unrest over the state of the economy, the Bolivian government was forced to withdraw the water contract. Bolivia has the second largest natural gas reserves in South America. 
the government has a long-term sales agreement to sell natural gas to Brazil through 2019. The government held a binding referendum in 2005 on the hydrocarbon law. The U.S. Geological Service estimates that Bolivia has 5.4 million cubic tons of lithium, which represent 50% to 70% of world reserves. However, to mine for it would involve disturbing the country's salt flats, called Solar de Uyuni, an important natural feature which boosts tourism in the region. The government does not want to destroy this unique natural landscape to meet the rising world demand for lithium. On the other hand, sustainable extraction of lithium is attempted by the government. This project is carried out by the public company Recursos Evaporiticos subsidiary of Comibol. It is thought that due to the importance of lithium for batteries for electric vehicles and stabilization of electric grids with large proportions of intermittent renewables in the electricity mix, Bolivia could be strengthened geopolitically. However, this perspective has also been criticized for underestimating the power of economic incentives for expanded production in other parts of the world. Once Bolivia's government depended heavily on foreign assistance to finance development projects and to pay the public staff. At the end of 2002, the government owed $4.5 billion to its foreign creditors, with $1.6 billion of this amount owed to other governments and most of the balance owed to multilateral development banks. Most payments to other governments have been rescheduled on several occasions since 1987 through the Paris Club mechanism. External creditors have been willing to do this because the Bolivian government has generally achieved the monetary and fiscal targets set by IMF programs since 1987, though economic crises have undercut Bolivia's normally good record. However, by 2013 the foreign assistance is just a fraction of the government budget thanks to tax collection mainly from the profitable exports to Brazil and Argentina of natural gas. Foreign Exchange Reserves the amount in reserve currencies and gold held by Bolivia's central bank advanced from 1.085 billion US dollars in 2000, under Hugo Banser Suarez's government, to 15.282 billion US dollars in 2014 under Evo Morales' government. Tourism The income from tourism has become increasingly important. Bolivia's tourist industry has placed an emphasis on attracting ethnic diversity. Tourism in Bolivia has varied attractions, due to its diverse culture, geographical regions, rich history and gastronomy. The most visited places being, Nevado Sajama, Toro Toro National Park, Madidi National Park, Tiwanaku and the city of La Paz among others. The best known of the various festivals found in the country is the Carnival de Oro, which was among the first 19 masterpieces of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity, as proclaimed by UNESCO in May 2001. Transport Roads Bolivia's youngest road was called the world's most dangerous road by the Inter-American Development Bank, called, El Camino de la Muerte, in Spanish. The northern portion of the road, much of it unpaved and without guard trails, was cut into the Cordillera Oriental Mountain in the 1930s. The fall from the narrow 12 feet, 3.7 meters, path is as much as 2,000 feet, 610 meters, in some places and due to the humid weather from the Amazon there are often poor conditions like mudslides and falling rocks. Each year over 25,000 bikers cycle along the 40 miles, 64 kilometer, road. In 2018, an Israeli woman was killed by a falling rock while cycling on the road. The Apollo Road goes deep into La Paz. Roads in this area were originally built to allow access to mines located near Karazani. Other noteworthy roads run to Corico, Sorda, the Zongo Valley, Iyimani Mountain, and along the Cochabamba Highway, Carretera. According to researchers with the Center for International Forestry Research, CIFOR, Bolivia's road network was still underdeveloped as of 2014. In lowland areas of Bolivia there is less than 2,000 kilometers, 2 million meters, of paved road. There have been some recent investments, animal husbandry has expanded in Guayra Marine, which might be due to a new road connecting Guayra Marine with Trinidad. Dot. Air Traffic The General Directorate of Civil Aeronautics Direction General d'Aeronautica Civil, GAC, formerly part of the FAB, administers a civil aeronautics school called the National Institute of Civil Aeronautics, Instituto Nacional d'Aeronautica Civil, INAC, and two commercial air transport services TAM and TAB. TAM, Transporte Aéreo Militar, the Bolivian military airline, is an airline based in La Paz, Bolivia. It is the civilian wing of the Fuerza Aérea Boliviana, the Bolivian Air Force, operating passenger services to remote towns and communities in the north and northeast of Bolivia. 
TAM, aka TAM Group 71, has been a part of the FAB since 1945. A similar airline serving the Beni department with small planes is Linea Aerea Amazonas, using smaller planes than TAM. Although a civil transport airline, TAB, Transportes Aereos Bolivianos, was created as a subsidiary company of the FAB in 1977. It is subordinate to the Air Transport Management, Herencia de Transportes Aereos, and is headed by Infab General. TAB, a charter heavy cargo airline, links Bolivia with most countries of the Western Hemisphere. Its inventory includes a fleet of Hercules C-130 aircraft. TAB is headquartered adjacent to El Alto International Airport. TAB flies to Miami and Houston, with a stop in Panama. The three largest, and main international airports in Bolivia are El Alto International Airport in La Paz, Viru Viru International Airport in Santa Cruz, and Jorge Wilstermann International Airport in Cochabamba. Railways Bolivia possesses an extensive paged rail system, all in 1,000 mm gauge, consisting of two disconnected networks. Technology Bolivia owns a communications satellite which was offshored-slash-outsourced and launched by China, named Tupac Cottery One. In 2015, it was announced that electrical power advancements include a planned $300 million nuclear reactor developed by the Russian nuclear company Rosatom. Water Supply and Sanitation Bolivia's drinking water and sanitation coverage has greatly improved since 1990 due to a considerable increase in sectoral investment. However, the country has the continent's lowest coverage levels and services are of low quality. Political and institutional instability have contributed to the weakening of the sector's institutions at the national and local levels. Two concessions to foreign private companies in two of the three largest cities, Cochabamba and La Paz slash El Alto, were prematurely ended in 2000 and 2006 respectively. The country's second largest city, Santa Cruz de la Sierra manages its own water and sanitation system relatively successfully by way of cooperatives. The government of Evo Morales intends to strengthen citizen participation within the sector. Increasing coverage requires a substantial increase of investment financing. According to the government the main problems in the sector are low access to sanitation throughout the country, low access to water in rural areas, insufficient and ineffective investments, a low visibility of community service providers, a lack of respect of indigenous customs, technical and institutional difficulties in the design and implementation of projects, a lack of capacity to operate and maintain infrastructure, an institutional framework that is not consistent with the political change in the country, ambiguities in the social participation schemes, a reduction in the quantity and quality of water due to climate change, pollution and a lack of integrated water resources management, and the lack of policies and programs for the reuse of wastewater. Only 27% of the population has access to improved sanitation, 80-88% to has access to improved water sources. Coverage in urban areas is bigger than in rural ones. Demographics According to the last two censuses carried out by the Bolivian National Statistics Institute, Instituto Nacional de Estadística, N, the population increased from 8,274,325 from which 4,123,850 were men and 4,150,475 were women, in 2001 to 10,027,254 in 2012. In the last 50 years the Bolivian population has tripled, reaching a population growth rate of 2.25%. The growth of the population in the inter-census periods, 1950 to 1976 and 1976 to 1992, was approximately 2.05 percent, while between the last period, 1992 to 2001, it reached 2.74 percent annually. Some 62.43 percent of Bolivians live in urban areas, while the remaining 37.57 percent in rural areas. The most part of the population, 70 percent, is concentrated in the departments of La Paz, Santa Cruz, and Cochabamba. In the Andean Altiplano region the departments of La Paz and Oro hold the largest percentage of population, in the Valley region the largest percentage is held by the departments of Cochabamba and Chuquisaca, while in the Llanos region by Santa Cruz and Beni. At national level, the population density is 8.49, with variations marked between 0.8, Pondo Department, and 26.2. Cochabamba Department. The largest population center is located in the so-called Central Axis and in the Llanos region. 
Bolivia has a young population. According to the 2011 census, 59% of the population is between 15 and 59 years old, 39% is less than 15 years old. Almost 60% of the population is younger than 25 years of age. Genetics According to a genetic study done on Bolivians, average values of Native American, European and African ancestry are 86%, 12.5%, and 1.5%, in individuals from La Paz and 76.8%, 21.4%, and 1.8% in individuals from Chiquisaca, respectively. Ethnic and Racial Classifications The vast majority of Bolivians are mestizo, with the indigenous component higher than the European one, although the government has not included cultural self-identification mestizo in the November 2012 census. There are approximately three dozen native groups totaling approximately half of the Bolivian population, the largest proportion of indigenous people in Latin America. The exact numbers vary based on the wording of the ethnicity question and the available response choices. For example, the 2001 census did not provide the racial category mestizo as a response choice, resulting in a much higher proportion of respondents identifying themselves as belonging to one of the available indigenous ethnicity choices. Mestizos are distributed throughout the entire country and make up 26% of the Bolivian population. Most people assume their mestizo identity while at the same time identifying themselves with one or more indigenous cultures. A 2018 estimate of racial classification put mestizo, mixed white and Amerindian, at 68%, indigenous at 20%, white at 5%, cholo at 2%, black at 1%, other at 4%, while 2% were unspecified, 44% attributed themselves to some indigenous group, predominantly the linguistic categories of Quechua or Amaras. Whites comprised about 14% of the population in 2006, and are usually concentrated in the largest cities, La Paz, Santa Cruz de la Sierra and Cochabamba, but as well in some minor cities like Tarija and Sucre. The ancestry of whites and the white ancestry of mestizos lies within the continents of Europe and Middle East, most notably Spain, Italy, Germany, Croatia, Lebanon, and Syria. In the Santa Cruz department, there are several dozen colonies of German-speaking Mennonites from Russia totaling around 40,000 inhabitants, as of 2012. Avril Bolivians, descendants of African slaves who arrived in the time of the Spanish Empire, inhabit the department of La Paz, and are located mainly in the provinces of Noryungas and Sudyungas. Slavery was abolished in Bolivia in 1831. There are also important communities of Japanese, 14.000, and Lebanese, 12.900. Indigenous peoples, also called originarios, native or original, and less frequently, Amerindians, could be categorized by geographic area, such as Andean, like the Amaras and Quechuas, who formed the ancient Inca Empire, who were concentrated in the western departments of La Paz, Potosi, Oro, Cochabamba, and Chiquisaca. There also are ethnic populations in the east, composed of the Chiquitano, Chain, Guarani, and Mojos, among others, who inhabit the departments of Santa Cruz, Beni, Tarija, and Pondo. There are small numbers of European citizens from Germany, France, Italy, and Portugal, as well as from other American countries, as Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Cuba, Ecuador, the United States, Paraguay, Peru, Mexico, and Venezuela, among others. There are important Peruvian colonies in La Paz, El Alto and Santa Cruz de la Sierra. Indigenous Peoples The indigenous peoples of Bolivia can be divided into two categories of ethnic groups, the Andeans, who are located in the Andean Altiplano in the Valley region, and the lowland groups, who inhabit the warm regions of central and eastern Bolivia, including the valleys of Cochabamba Department, the Amazon Basin areas of northern La Paz Department, and the lowland departments of Beni, Pondo. Santa Cruz, and Tarija, including the Gran Chaco region in the southeast of the country. Large numbers of Andean peoples have also migrated to form Quechua, Aymara, and intercultural communities in the lowlands. Language Bolivia has great linguistic diversity as a result of its multiculturalism. The Constitution of Bolivia recognizes 36 official languages besides Spanish, Aymara, Ariona, Bor, Bisairo, Canacana, Cavineno, Cayubaba, Chacabo, Chiman, Esaigia, Guarani, Garisoe, Garayu, Itonema, Leco, 
Mikhaya Kalawaya, Machinery, Maropa, Mojano Ignacio, Mojano Trinitario, More, Mostan, Muvima, Pacawara, Pukina, Quechua, Siriono, Takana, Tapiete, Toromona, Uruchipaya, Winhayak, Yamanawa, Yuki, Yurikare, and Samuco. Spanish is the most spoken official language in the country, according to the 2001 census, as it is spoken by two thirds of the population. All legal and official documents issued by the state, including the Constitution, the main private and public institutions, the media, and commercial activities, are in Spanish. The main indigenous languages are Quechua, 21.2% of the population in the 2001 census, Aymara, 14.6%, Guarani, 0.6%, and others, 0.4%, including the Mohos in the Department of Beni. Plautich, a German dialect, is spoken by about 70,000 Mennonites in Santa Cruz. Portuguese is spoken mainly in the areas close to Brazil. Religion Bolivia is a constitutionally secular state that guarantees the freedom of religion and the independence of government from religion. According to the 2001 census conducted by the National Institute of Statistics of Bolivia, 78% of the population is Roman Catholic, followed by 19% that are Protestant, as well as a small number of Bolivians that are Orthodox, and 3% non-religious. The Association of Religion Data Archives, relying on the World Christian Database, records that in 2010, 92.5% of Bolivians identified as Christian, of any denomination. 3.1% identified with indigenous religion, 2.2% identified as Baha'i, 1.9% identified as agnostic, and all other groups constituted 0.1% or less. Much of the indigenous population adheres to different traditional beliefs marked by enculturation or syncretism with Christianity. The cult of Pachamama, or Mother Earth, is notable. The veneration of the Virgin of Copacabana, Virgin of Orcupina and Virgin of Socavan is also an important feature of Christian pilgrimage. There also are important Amaran communities near Lake Titicaca that have a strong devotion to James the Apostle. Deities worshipped in Bolivia include Akeko, the Amaran god of abundance and prosperity, whose day is celebrated every 24th of January, and Tupa, a god of the Guarani people. Largest cities and towns Approximately 67% of Bolivians live in urban areas, among the lowest proportion in South America. Nevertheless, the rate of urbanization is growing steadily, at around 2.5% annually. According to the 2012 census, there are a total of 3,158,691 households in Bolivia, an increase of 887,960 from 2001. In 2009, 75.4% of homes were classified as a house, hut, or pahuichi, 3.3% or apartments. 21.1% were rental residences, and 0.1% were mobile homes. Most of the country's largest cities are located in the highlands of the west and central regions. Culture Bolivian culture has been heavily influenced by the Aymara, the Quechua, as well as the popular cultures of Latin America as a whole. The cultural development is divided into three distinct periods, pre-Columbian, colonial, and republican. Important archaeological ruins Gold and silver ornaments, stone monuments, ceramics, and weavings remain from several important pre Columbian cultures. Major ruins include Tiwanaku, El Fuerte de Samaipata, Incalipta, and Iskanawaya. The country abounds in other sites that are difficult to reach and have seen little archaeological exploration. The Spanish brought their own tradition of religious art, which, in the hands of local native and mestizo builders and artisans, developed into a rich and distinctive style of architecture painting, and sculpture known as Mestizo Baroque. The colonial period produced not only the paintings of Perez de Alguin, Flores, Biddy, and others but also the works of skilled but unknown stonecutters, woodcarvers, goldsmiths, and silversmiths. An important body of native Baroque religious music of the colonial period was recovered and has been performed internationally to wide acclaim since 1994. Bolivian artists of stature in the 20th century include Maria Luisa Pacheco, Roberto Mamani Mamani, Alejandro Mario Lins, Alfredo de Silva, and Marina Nunez del Prado. Bolivia has a rich folklore. Its regional folk music is distinctive and varied. The devil dances at the annual Carnival of Oro are one of the great folkloric events of South America, as is the lesser-known Carnival at Terabuco. 
education. In 2008, following UNESCO standards, Bolivia was declared free of illiteracy, making it the fourth country in South America to attain this status. Bolivia has public and private universities. Among them, Universidad Mayor, Really Ponificia de San Francisco Xavier de Chuquisaca USFX Sucre, founded in 1624, Universidad Mayor de San Andres Umsa, La Paz, founded in 1830. Universidad Mayor de San Simon UMSS Cochabamba, founded in 1832, Universidad Autónoma Gabriel René Moreno Wagram, Santa Cruz de la Sierra, founded in 1880, Universidad Tecnica de Oro Udo, Oro, founded in 1892, and Universidad Autónoma de Mas Fria Suatf, Potosi, founded in 1892. In 2017, Bolivia is the first country in South America in terms of funds dedicated to public education and is the second in Latin America, after Cuba. Health Based on 2013 the World Factbook estimates, Bolivia is ranked 161st in life expectancy with a number of 68.2 years. Life expectancy for men is 65.4 and for women is 71.1. A study by the United Nations Development Program and United Nations International Emergency Children's Fund reported over 230 babies died per day in Bolivia through lack of proper care. The majority of the population has no health insurance or access to health care. Demographic and Health Surveys has completed five surveys in Bolivia since 1989 on a wide range of topics. Between 2006 and 2016, extreme poverty in Bolivia fell from 38.2% to 16.8%. Chronic malnutrition in children under 5 years of age also went down by 14% and the child mortality rate was reduced by more than 50%, according to World Health Organization. Sports Football, Spanish, football, U.S. English, soccer, is widespread. The national team is the Bolivia national football team. Racquetball is the second most popular sport in Bolivia as for the results in the Odyssey 2018 games held in Cochabamba 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 in the Odyssey 2018 games